uh, for the 24th of April, uh, which is after 3 o'clock London time here. Uh, we'll be covering the butterfly pattern today, which is a, what we reference a extension pattern. Um, it's a harmonic um, Fibonacci based pattern. Pretty simple, um, but obviously a few rules uh, in to take into account. Before we get going, uh, we just want to run through the, the disclaimer. Spread bearing, spread bearing forex and CFD trading carry a high level of risk to your capital and can result in losses that may exceed the initial deposit. Trading of these products may not be suitable for everyone, so please ensure you understand all the risks associated with trading. Information and comments provided here and under no circumstances are to be considered an offer or solicitation to invest, and all information provided is believed to be accurate at the date the information is produced. Nothing here and should be construed as investment advice. The information provided within the room is the personal opinion of the moderator and not trading mode. This content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice, and trademark does not accept any liability for the content of the comments made during the session. All right, so today's uh, class, we're going to cover um, the butterfly pattern. As I said earlier, it's uh, an extension pattern. Basically, we've covered uh, a few patterns already. Uh, we've covered the Gartley pattern and we've covered the bat pattern. Those are the two um, the two extension patterns, people uh, on the two retracement patterns uh, that are quite uh, quite common to trade. Uh, and obviously we've we've been through a few of them already. They work uh, uh, pretty well. Today's pattern is the extension pattern. So if we just go to our uh, our drawing board here, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to get a bit more space on the chart. Yeah, that's better. So let's just quickly cover the Gartley pattern, uh, just because we we have some point of reference here. So essentially, what we're looking at here is a a swing up, okay, where we have point X and point A. That's your initial swing, okay? That's kind of where you're gonna have a decent bit of pressure coming into the market. Now, in this case, we're looking at a bullish pattern. So what we'll do is we simply draw a fib from the swing low up to the swing high. So basically from point X up to point A. And price starts to retrace. Now, remember for a Gartley pattern, we're looking at the 618 retracement. Once we've got that point referenced and price starts to retrace we'll label that point b price and starts to retrace from there and we're looking at point c okay so now what we're looking at is when we draw a fib from point a down to point b we look at very specific fib numbers we're looking at the 786 and the 127 extension okay you'll see the numbers are basically exactly the same all right. We can also look at an A, B equals C, D. So basically, this A, B price retraces up to point C, like this. And then what we're looking at is we're looking at this point, point A, B, to equal point C, D. So D, where we're actually looking to take the trade. Okay, so this is what we would term, this is your Gartley pattern, this is what we would term your retracement pattern, okay, and it's a retracement because obviously we've got an initial leg and price is retracing that initial leg, okay, so pretty straightforward. Now what we can do is we're going to cover one of the extension patterns, so when I talk about an extension pattern, the price finding support inside the leg, the XA leg, and moving off that area, we now to reference the extension patterns where price, instead of it coming down and retracing in here, we actually look for price to move through point X. Okay, so it's actually breaking through point X. I'm looking for it to come down, and for the butterfly pattern. We're looking for it to complete. So we're looking at point D to complete at the 127 
extension of XA. Okay. So this time, instead of finding support inside the XA swing, we're now looking outside the XA swing for support to be found. And we're looking at the very specific number of the 127 extension from X to A. Okay. Now, this is where the formation of the butterfly comes in. So what we're looking at, we're looking at very specific retracements. So price moves from X to A, and it starts to retrace. Now remember for a Gartley, we're now looking at the B swing. Gartley was very specific, it was to a 618. Okay. For a butterfly pattern, looking at a very specific number, price must move down to the 786 retracement, or 79% retracement. Now, it obviously can come you know, a little bit sort of close to that area. But essentially, that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at the 786 retracement to hold our support and for price to start to retrace. Okay. Now, once we start getting the retracement, so now we have point B in place. Okay. So we have X, A, B, price starts to rally. And now we're very similar, we're drawing a fib from point A down to point B. And what you'll notice is, have a look at the extensions here. Because when price moves down to the 786, and then it starts to rally, the more specific that retracement of the XA swing, so the more specific that 786 number is, so bang on the number, you'll see the extension from XA, the 127, and the extension from the AB swing projects down to 1618. So you see they exactly the same number, okay? That forms your completion point for your butterfly pattern, okay? Now, you'll also have an AB equals CD formation and Normally, it's because this is an extension pattern, you'll normally have some sort of variation, okay, some extension point. So we measure from A to B. If I take my Fibonacci expansion tool and I just measure it from A down to B, and then I move it up to the retracement point, depending on where the retracement is. Minimum retracement, by the way, between B to C, the minimum retracement is a 38%, okay? So if it doesn't find a 38%, then we don't have a completion point. So if it kind of did this, and it fell short of the 38% and then it moved down, it's a no-go. It must meet at least a 38% up to the 50 or 618 area. So let's say it retraces up to the 50%. I can then take my Fibonacci expansion tool and draw from A down to B up to C, and you'll see the 100%, which is basically your AB equals CD, is coming in over here, okay? So where it says 100%, all it's saying is basically this AB leg would equal, that leg would equal this leg at this point here, okay? So with a butterfly pattern, the extension point will be normally just past, okay? It's normally, uh, depending on the... the the retrace from B to C, uh, 1.27 or a little bit further, 1.618. Okay, so ideally you want to have that equal CD. Okay, now you also find in your textbooks they'll draw it from B to C with a projection and they'll start looking at some kind of fib expansion or extension down in that area. Right? So each to their own. The way I've been taught and the way I use it is like this. Okay, so I'm looking for that tight confluence, 127, 1618. That would be my buy zone. Okay, so it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, really. So it's looking for very specific retracements. Now, if you had to look at this in a textbook or on the internet what you will find is you'll find these triangles okay and that's simply they just joined 
these points up like this and like this. Okay, so that's what you would see as the pattern. But in terms of the actual legs, this is how price would move. So it'd move up X to A. It would move down to point D being a very specific retracement, a 786 retracement. Okay. And then we'd rally up, finding, uh, finding resistance between the 38 and the 886 retracement of A to B. And then we're looking to take a trade at point D. Okay. So as I said, the very specific number here is the 786. As with the Cartley, the Cartley very specific was 618. The butterfly is a 786. Right, so hopefully yeah, that makes sense to you guys. And we're looking to make a trade right here with a 127 extension of XA aligns with the 1618 extension from A to B. Okay. Pretty straightforward. In terms of stop placement, okay, so very simple. What I will do is I'll put a stop loss below the 1618 extension of XA. Okay, so remember we have we have the 127 extension of XA here and the 1618 extension of XA, which is deep obviously. So my stop loss will go a handful of pips below that area. Depending on the size of the pattern, anywhere some five to ten pips should be sufficient okay and as i said this is an extension pattern because we're trading at the extension points and it's a bullish pattern so we're looking for a move to the upside okay so pretty simple stuff In terms of taking profits, now there's different ways of going about it, okay? So that's really going to be, you know, dependent upon the trader. I would personally mark off and look at the A to D swing, as I showed you guys if you watched the previous session. So I would look at this swing here. Once price starts to turn at D and starts to move off that point, then I will look at drawing a fit from A down to D, and very simply that will be my take profit area. So what I will look at is the 38%. So if price moves up, so if it traces up to the 38%, that's break even point. And you'll see very often that will align with point B as resistance. So you'll have confluence of the 38%. And point B, so this was obviously support in the marketplace. So when price moves up, I will look at getting my stop loss to break even. So this is the first thing here. Okay. So risk gets removed at that point. Let's move this stop loss. Grab it. There we go. Then have a free look at the trade, and the take profit will simply be up here at the six one eight. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of management. You could also, you know, you could take full profits off at point B. So point B will be your first kind of major resistance area. You could take profits. All profits off there it's normally decent risk reward anyway or if you wanted to you could look up towards these deeper retracements maybe up towards the 786 or 886 level that will come in sort of alignment with you know maybe a double top maybe we'll have some resistance up here maybe a pocket of supply or something to watch so that could be an option or if you're very aggressive you could look up towards 127 extension all the way up there. Sorry, everyone, it's not this is one here. 
So from A to D, there's the 127 extension. So that's essentially, you know, that's pretty much it in terms of the pattern. That's a bullish pattern. If we look at the bearish version, we have a down move. Just make this a little bit thicker. Okay, which we would label point X and point A. Right? We then draw a fib retracement from X to A and price starts to retrace. Now, remember, we're looking for very specific. I'm just going to adjust this. We're looking for a very specific retracement to the 79 or 786 retracement, okay, which is right over. Once price starts to move off that area, I then have point. B of the pattern okay and then what I can do adjust this slightly is draw a fib retracement from A up to B and remember price must make a minimum of a 38% retracement so let's say it moves down into this area here somewhere what you will see is the completion point of the pattern is up here okay we have a 127 extension with a 1618 extension so it's X to a there's the 127 extension and from a up to B we have the 1618 extension so that's the completion of the pattern once we have price turning around we can label it C and we're looking for a move up here as a cell zone. Okay. What does qualify as a pattern? I didn't cover this on the previous pattern, but very simply, if price retraces, if the A B swing, if B moves up and moves above point X, then the pattern is invalidated. Okay, so very straightforward. And on the other end, if point C, so the return of AB, if price moves down in point C and it breaks point A, the pattern's invalidated. Okay. Simple as that. The other thing you would also look at is let's say price moves up, up, breaks point B, and then it does this kind of thing and moves below point C, then I would invalidate pattern as well. So it must have some sort of decent structure to it, right? So we're looking at a completion point up here. This is point D. That's where we're looking to sell short, okay? And stop loss, here's a 1618 extension of XA. So the stop loss would go a few pips above that. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So we have very specific rules, okay, for the pattern. It's not, um, you know, obviously if you've seen it for the first time, it may be a little bit, uh, a little bit daunting. Okay, you may be a little bit on the confused side about, you know, where, where, where do you draw, you know, certain, certain levels from, etc., and where must it be traced to? But essentially, it's it's difficult once you. Come Play around with the the, the pattern. It, it's pretty uh, pretty simple. Okay, and it gives very specific guidelines. Okay, that's what's nice about the pattern. It gives very very specific um, guidelines in terms of where to enter and where to exit. Okay. So in terms of trading the pattern, we would enter at the 127 extension, stops above the 161 extension, and once price starts to move down, so that I have an actual point, I've identified 
that I do actually have point D in place, I can then take a fib extend a fib retracement from A up to D. I'll just change the color on there. Okay, so I'll draw from A up to D, and basically when price comes down to the thirty eight percent, that's my break even point. You'll see also it lines up with point B as a level of support. Okay, so that could be a good confidence. If the market is is aggressive and strongly trending, then very often the 38% is as far as it's going to get before you see it doing this. Okay, this is a reversal pattern. So you are basically picking a top in case of a bearish pattern or picking a bottom in case of a bearish a bullish pattern okay it is an extension pattern it is a very aggressive pattern but they can work extremely well okay you can wait for confirmation you can wait for confirmation at this 127 area i i more often than not just use a limit order okay but there's nothing wrong with looking for confirmation like a few little candles or something like that up at the area so coming back to managing it 38 percent is very simply the break even point of the pattern okay if it does this kind of thing and then it moves down i'm looking at say profit at very simply this area here okay and as I said, you know, this is this is pretty conservative. You can look a lot lower. You can look maybe down here at point C. Point C will line up maybe with a Fibonacci. You see this this point C here lines up with this 786 retracement. Okay, so that could be a nice confluence. You could look down towards this area here. Double bottom type thing. Okay. Or if you're very aggressive, you look at the extensions, 127 extension. Okay. So that's the pattern. We've done we covered the bearish and the bullish version. Now let's have a look and see if we can find some some examples. I've actually um, literally I was just having a quick scan through and on this pair here we've kind of moved a little bit on the deep side but I want to just show you the structure. This is a five minute chart of the euro yen so if we just have a look at this this structure we have this swing up right it's a nice clean swing up we have point x we have point a all right so what we're going to do we're going to take our fib tool and draw it from point x up to point a like that price comes down to the 79% retracement. Okay. I mean, this is a five minute chart, it's missed it by 0.7 of a pip. Okay. So that to me is, I'll class that as completed. It then starts to retrace. Okay. Once it starts to retrace, I can then label this point B. Okay. So I have X. A, you see this move down like this to the 786. Once it starts to retrace, I'd label that point B. And then price starts to move up. Now remember, the rules are simple. On this A, B swing, B cannot retrace past point X. Okay. And when we start to move up, so when we start to move up like this, this B, C leg, cannot move past a okay cannot break past these points so those are the very specific rules the structure of the pattern now when price moves up and it falls out we can label this point c and we can draw our fibs from point a down to point b and you see this is a very deep retracement it's moved all the way up to the 886 just past the 886 retracement okay but it hasn't broken above point a 
So in this case, the pattern would complete right here. You see the 127 and the 1618 extension. So from the A, B, swing, there's the 127. From the A to B, sorry, from the XA, I beg your pardon, is the 127. From the A to B, 1618. You can also look to see if you've got that AB equals CD pattern. So we take our Fabric Expansion tool and just draw it down from there, from A down to B, up to point C, like that. You'll see we have the 1618 expansion lining up there. Okay, so that would be reference as a buy zone. Okay. So how would you play this? You would put a limit, or well, either a limit or wait for confirmation. But a limit in here, like such with a stop loss below the 1618 extension of XA. So we put a stop loss a few pips below this area. Okay, so we've actually see we've hit the 1618 extension on the button there. Okay. So your stop loss, depending what is this in terms of pips? Probably use probably a little bit lower, maybe five, five, six pips somewhere around there. So that would be my stop loss placement. Okay. And this would be the completion point. This is point D. So D, you would obviously, you know, you're projecting point D to form. So you're looking for this swing down. You're looking at this as the buy zone. Obviously, in this case, prices moved off a bit deeper so so this you see the retracement now this is what i would class as point d okay and what i would do then is i would draw my fibs from point a down to point d like this okay so if we just draw this in like such And if we take a FIB tool from A down to this point D, okay, you'll see we have the 38 cent right here. Let me just get rid of this expansion tool. Too many lines overlapping each other here. So we've taken a fib. From A to D, there's the 38%. Okay. So obviously with a very deep swing down like this, you see our price has obviously moved between the 127 down to the 6. It's actually bounced from the 1618 area. So with the D point being much deeper, the break-even point becomes a lot, uh, a lot uh, closer. Okay. Whereas obviously, if you had it bouncing around here somewhere, you would have it up here. Okay. So it it kind of varies from pattern to pattern. But there's the thirty-eight percent. Okay. So that would be a break-even point. And then the 1618 would be the take profit area. Okay. Now, if I just go and have a look here, we've got, oh, actually, I've, I've managed to put in a an order here. So there's the, the actual entry point right there. Okay. What I did with this case, because price broke down and I missed the initial entry, I've just taken a buy stop. As okay, so I've had a buy stop order here, and the stop loss is just below this one six one eight extension. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need price to move up, and it needs to hit the one thirty eight. I beg upon the one, not the one, just the thirty eight retracement. Okay, if it can move up to the thirty eight retracement, 
that means I can move my stop loss to break even and then I can look at a profit target so I can actually trip because it's just a drag and drop I can target just sort of uh, just below so we add 150 I'll make it 149 okay so if it pays we're looking around the 28 pip mark and the risk on the trade we're looking about 24 okay 23 so because obviously we've we've moved a lot deeper I only know my take profit once price turns if price had turned here somewhere obviously my take profit improves somewhat okay so just be wary of that and what you can do with this is very straightforward just go to alerts if you've got a drag and drop even better um, so if you just go here so you're in so we want bid when it moves above you can put it in there 141 let's make it 32 okay so now I have my alert in place And now you can literally just sit back and relax okay and let the market do its thing so at this moment in time it's either going to move down and stop us out or it's going to move up and we get paid for well, we get to break even and if we're lucky enough price will continue up and we get paid okay So we're taking out all the emotion from the trade. And as I said, you know, these there's different ways of managing the trade, but make sure, you know, if whatever pattern or, or method you're using, if you don't have three things with every method, okay. So every, every method, and this is going off topic a little bit here. So you must have A method okay every single methodology that you have or system if you want to call it that or trading model it must have three things okay it must have an entry something needs to tell you when to enter the market okay whether it's you know it could be flipping the coin or whatever I each their own but something needs to tell you to get into the market the next thing is you must have a stop loss it must tell you where to place your stop loss okay if you don't have a stop loss you're not going to be a long trading for long I guarantee it okay you have to be able to limit your risk so you must be able to have some point of reference very important okay and then thirdly you have to have some way to take profit okay without one of these three things you don't have a methodology or a trading model you have to have all three so with these patterns this is one of the reasons I like these patterns so much I have a very specific entry method so depending on the pattern I'm entering at certain either retracements or extensions I know where my stop loss placement is going okay so the first thing is method gives us an entry all right in this case the butterfly we're entering at the 127 extension with confluence of the 1618 extension i must have a place to put a stop loss in this instance for the pattern it's below the 1618 extension and we're obviously in the game of trading to make money I must be able to have some way of taking profits okay. so and and step three, three 
three is what you're going to formulate as your trade management plan. Okay. So in terms of you know this is a very straightforward pattern. But ma you know managing. So what are you going to do? Are you going to scale out? Okay. So as price moves in your favor, are you going to take profits along the way? Are you going to move to break even? And if you break even, how are you going to do it? Where are you going to do it? Okay. A lot of people will trade break even at one to one. So in this case, let's say uh, what are we we used twenty four pips. When price moves twenty four pips, we get to break even. That's an option. Okay. If you're scaling out, how are you going to scale out? Well, as an example, you could scale out at the thirty eight percent. Scale one off. Maybe you want to scale one off at the 618 retracement. So at the 618, you scale two off. And then maybe we want to look for a, a nice home run. And the 127 extension looks pretty decent. Okay, so the 1.27 extension will be scale three. Okay, so now what we have is we have a trade management set of rules. We know the entry and the stop loss is simple enough. Okay, we have very specific entry way or entry uh, area. We have a very specific stop loss placement area below certain areas. Either if you're trading a Gartley or BAT or one of those below point X, okay, because they're retracements, because this is an extension, we're looking below a deeper extension, okay. And as for the take profit, okay, obviously that's open for. Um, you know, a little bit of interpretation or a little bit of more freedom, but you know, maybe we can one to one, we go to break even and we can scale out, okay? Maybe we scale out instead of the 38%, maybe at one to one, we go to break even, we scale one lot at the 618, we scale two lots at the 127 extension. Okay. Obviously, the further price moves, you know, the further your target, the less likelihood that price is going to get there. So instead of just looking for home runs, you know, maybe you just want to kind of, you know, keep it simple and keep it, you know, one, one and a half or two to one, something like that. Okay. But as I said, if we don't have those three things to everything we trade, every pattern, an entry, a stop loss, and a point to take profit at, we don't have a method. It doesn't matter what you're trading. And this is why a lot of traders get themselves into trouble. You're going to take, you know, whatever the method, support resistance, you need to be able to have a way of placing a stop loss and you need to have a way of taking profits so if you're entering at support maybe use resistance as a, as a way of taking profits okay pretty straightforward i think 
Now, this is a bullish, uh, a bullish butterfly that we've covered. Let's have a look and see if we can, uh, if we can maybe cover some more here. Let's really get rid of this trade level thing here, and we'll see if we can cover a bearish pattern. I think it was actually. Get rid of this very quickly because I think here we go. So, if we just have a look here, this is a bearish version of the pattern. So, we have identified point X and point A. Nice swing down, so we can label this point X, point A. Okay, what we want to do is we want to take our FIB tool and draw from X down to point A. Okay, remember we're looking at a specific retracement to a 786 retracement. So when price starts to move up and it stores at the 786 and it starts to retrace, I can then label this point B. Okay. Up from A up to B. Right? And when this price starts to break down like this, starts to move down, and it starts to retrace off this area, I can label this point point C. Okay. Remember, for the pattern to be valid, point B can't retrace past X, and point C can't retrace past point A. So very straightforward. And what we're looking for now, once we have this X, A, B, C structure, we're looking at the 127, 1618 extension as a place to enter at. Okay. And you can also look at your FIB expansion tool from A up to B down to C. We just want to make sure we have at least the A, B equals C, D, and you'll see you have, in this case, a 138 expansion up here. Okay, So this area here will be classed as a cell zone. And in terms of entry, obviously we're entering here, the 130, sorry, the 127. Stop loss above the 1618 extension of XA. Okay, so a few pips above that. Like that. So that's my risk. I have an entry point, I have a stop loss. Okay, remember our three things. And we need to have a way of taking profits. So this is the completion point. This is D up here, once it starts to retrace, I can then take a FIB tool a measure from A up to D. Okay, so if we measure this one here, from A to D, I take my FIB tool from A up to D. Okay, very specific rules for management, 38% in break even. Okay, so we start with a risk of about 40, 40 pips. Okay, goes to break even. And take profit is down here. So we're looking about 72 pips. Let's call it 70. Okay, very, very simple way of doing it, as I said, you can be a little bit more aggressive 
down here perhaps you see the lows here the 886 area lines up with the lows okay that obviously give you a lot more profit but you know price may not get there in this case had you looked at your extension you get paid okay and this obviously this one you're talking about 155 pips but just have a look at you know price kind of hits that 127 and it flies up the page okay so you know as i said these patterns happen fairly regularly just play around with them kind of you know get used to kind of drawing the structure okay as i said earlier when we were looking at this euro trade uh the euro dollar we were looking at this swing here so from here up to here this is point x this is point A. This is very specific, 786. Okay. It then rallies. Anyway, it starts to rally. So we've got this move down like this. So when it starts to rally, we can label this point B. And when we start to rally up like this, from A, sorry, from B up here. This, when we start to turn, this is point C. Okay. Very simply, we draw flips from A up to B. So when C starts to turn like this, we're looking here. Okay. So this would be the completion point of D. Okay. Let's have a look at some other examples quickly. See if we can find something else. I think uh, there was this one here. And this is what's also nice about the pattern. You can, you know, you can get the pattern invalidated pretty quickly. If you have a look at this, there was, I'll show you the bullish version, and this is not, it's definitely not the prettiest, okay, this would obviously be a little bit more kind of iffy, but from here to here, we draw a from here up to the high, okay, price comes down, in this case it actually comes down a little bit deeper, it comes into the 886 area and just watch how this varies okay watch how this varies in terms of fibs I should see if this was maybe more ideal that was probably a little bit more ideal okay this swing here to here I knew there's one around here this one is a little bit more specific but very it's very very choppy okay so from, not from this swing from this swing here you see our price moves down to the 786 like this then it starts to rally so if you draw fibs from this high down to this low you'll see the completion here 127 and the 1618 so when price comes down like this this is the completion point here okay but just go back a step so this is a bullish pattern here you're looking to buy at the 127 stop loss below a few pips below this 1618 area okay take profit once price starts to turn measuring from the high down to the low I'll just get rid of this for, for now. So you're measuring from this high here down to this low. 
there's the 38% there and there's your take profit there now in this instance because you're entering here at the 127 you see a price moves off the level hits the 38% finds resistance it comes back okay so we just stopped your break even on the management rules that I've shown you here and then it goes to your target okay that's going to happen right so just step back a second we're running out of time here but if you just kind of and as I said it this is kind of where you're gonna to have to play around with these things a little bit but if we kind of look at this swing here you see how the 786 and the 886 it hits the 886 number okay so if you now took your fib from this swing low to this sorry the high to the low Okay, like that so we're measuring once again if we draw the scene from here to here from here to here so just price moving instead of to the 786 it's now moving to the 886 and then price moves up if you have a look at the the distance here's the 127 and here's the 1618 now because it's not much difference we're kind of five four pips apart okay but same thing you see we're entering up here price rally hits a 38 moves down stops break even and then moves up okay so it does vary and that's why i say depending on who teaches the pattern uh Okay, I'm looking for a very specific retracement to the 786. If you learn the pattern from Larry Pesavento, he was the, um, I wouldn't say the originator, Bryce, I think Bryce Gilmore, if that's his name. He, he found the pattern. But if you look at the completion point, I'm looking for a very specific, I'm looking at uh, the, uh, the guy that sort of made it to the 786 was Scott Carney, okay? So if you read up a little bit more about in a textbook or something like that, you'll find this this number here can vary. But I just wanted to show you the variables here. Okay. These numbers, these extensions will change if the retracements numbers change. Right. Right, guys, I will leave it at that. This year again, uh, we're we haven't got to that take profit yet. Okay. Uh, to the, the break even point as i said we just kind of for illustration purposes it's not a an ideal situation had you entered here on a limit order obviously you know you'd still be in the trade and this is what's kind of nice about this is you know you don't have to kind of stress out about uh you know what to do or anything like that your very specific rules that tell you what to do next okay so hope you found that helpful um that's today's class done on patterns and specifically the uh, the butterfly pattern okay so we covered the bullish and the bearish version we'll see if we can get a little surge higher here maybe we can get to break even got a couple minutes doesn't look like it wants to do it we'll see we need that surge up so very specific needs to move up to the 38 percent and then we can get our risk out okay now obviously in this case as i said it's not it's not ideal because prices bled right through the 127 area and found support a lot deeper than 1618 so the distance now from entry to our break even point if we're doing it like this is much smaller okay it's only it's only 11 12 pips So obviously, if price had turned a lot earlier, so we got to turn kind of here. It would have this distance would have been like 20 pips. Okay, so there's the alarm going off now, and there's our stop to break even. Okay, so at least we managed to see that through.
Okay, so stop the break even now, and we can't lose anything on the trade. And we've got a free look. Now, let's get, delete this thing here. We've got a free look, and I'll uh, I'll take profit. Okay. Cheers, guys. Hope you found that helpful, and we will catch you all tomorrow. Take care.